Hey there. Today I'd like to do another round of vocabulary in French. And I've brought this book that I've used before, Vocabulaire Progressif du Français. And today I would like to do um, part of the chapter on plaisir de la table, specifically about wine. And I've also brought one of my old notebooks that I used a couple of years ago for learning French. So there are plenty of exercises that are filled out in there. That's why my books look a little empty because I always try to write in here. Alright, today we're gonna pick a new page. And we're gonna fill it out. Not in the book, but in this little notebook. But for now, let's put the notebook aside. And let's just read these instructions. As always, here we have all these words that we want to learn. And example phrases. And on the right hand side we have exercises. We're going to the we're going to do the first one, two, three, and four. Alright, so here we have le vin, la viticulture, un viticulteur ou un vigneron, un producteur cultive son vigne en place, c'est-à-dire ses vignes. Ensuite, il s'occupe de la vinification et la vinification c'est la fabrication du vin. So we have the person who makes the wine, the area where the wine grows, and the process of making wine. Les cépages comme le Cabernet, le Pinot, le Merlot, le Chardonnay sont des plants des vignes. À la saison des vendanges, en septembre en général, les vendacheurs vont vendacher, c'est-à-dire cuir les grappes de raisin. So here we have different types of um, grape wines, different plants. The plants are called Cabernet, Pinot, Merlot, Chardonnay, etc. And the harvest is called les vendangeurs vont danger. Le vin sera mis en cuve, puis en fût ou en tonneau, à moins d'être mis en bouteille. On peut acheter des bouteilles de différents cuvées. So, here we are in the process of making wine. The wine is put first en feu ou en tonneau and then en bouteille. So it's need to ferment, then you leave it to rest in a barrel, then it's put in a bottle. On peut acheter des bouteilles de différents cuvées, so different sorts of wine. On analyse la teneur en alcool ou le taux d'alcool, so the percentage of alcohol. Un vin de quart doit être conservé. On le fait vieillir pour qu'il se bonifie ou devienne meilleur. Il sera entreposé dans une cave. So here we have something called un vie de garde. 
and it means that you don't drink it immediately but you let it age for a while so it gets better on a stung on four millisim une bonne année comme 2008 un grand millésime comme 2007 ou un millésime exceptionnel comme 2009 So you have different years and they can be good, they can be great or exceptional I'm not sure if these are example numbers or if these three years really were like that If you know, drop me a comment et les meilleurs vins sont des AOC, Appellation Nourishing Contrôlée. So it says the best wines come with this label, AOC. I'm not quite sure if this corresponds necessarily with quality. Um, from what I know, it means that it's from a certain um, area and that there's a control that it meets certain standards if those are necessarily the best wines I don't know, but that might be a matter of taste but don't quote me on that <laughs> okay, then here we are with Les types de vin La forme de la bouteille et l'étiquette dont les renseignements sur le vin So the form of the bottle and the, uh, the label on it tells you something about the wine. On the stung, un petit vin de table ou un vin de pays, correctivement. De grand vin ou un grand cru, de qualité exceptionnelle. Parfois, hélas, on boit de la piquette, du mauvais vin qui pique. So you would distinguish between un petit vin de table, un vin de pays, so a small wine that is um, good, from a great wine, a grand vin ou grand cru, with exceptional quality. And if you have a wine that's not quite what you were expecting, uh, you can say it's la piquette, but... Um, I can't find this little star anywhere. I think it means that this is something a little... Um, not a word that you would write, necessarily. Alright, then we have... Certains préfèrent un vin sec, comme le Riesling. D'autres un vin moelleux, comme les Sauternes. Ou encore un vin d'eau naturelle, comme le Muscat. So you have dry wine, like Riesling, or um, Mouillon. But I'm not quite sure how to translate that, except um, the opposite of dry. <laughs> or you also have wines that are sort of naturally sweet, like uh, Muscat. Here you would call it Muscatella, which is a type of wine that I like very much. I'm not a big fan of uh, dry wine. Um, most wine that you get here in Austria, that is produced here in Austria, is quite dry. So for a long time I wasn't the biggest fan of wine. But um, when I spent some time in France, um, we often have a petit vin de table with our um, dinner and I really enjoyed those red wines. So that's a bit more my taste, so French red wines. Alright. Quand on aime le vin mousseux ou pétillant, on boit bien sûr du champagne, mais c'est du crémant, de la blanquette, du couvré. So, something like champagne would be called le vin mousseux ou pétillant, sparkling. Un bon vin rouge peut être versé dans une carafe. That's what we see down here, in the carafe, pour qu'il décompte. 
la décantation permet de laisser reposer le dépôt, la lie. Ensuite, on la serre chambrée à la température de la pièce. En petit bain de pays est souvent servi en pichet. That's what we have here. En pichet. So it is as a red wine. It's left to breathe a little. And then you serve it at room temperature. So most rooms are heated to uh, a temperature that's a bit higher than recommended, I believe. de la table le vin right. number one de quoi ou de qui partons en relation avec le vin so who or what are we talking about here? Il est exceptionnel cette année. So wine is exceptional this year. If we are referring to the year, then I would guess it's this year. Un millésime exceptionnel. So we're on part one. Phrase one. Uh, millésime exceptionnel. I guess you could also maybe refer to something like a grand vin, a grand cru, but I don't know if this necessarily refers to the year. So we're going to stick with this. Okay, the second sentence. On ne doit pas le voir tout de suite, mais au contraire, le laisser dans la cave pendant une dizaine d'années. So you mustn't drink it immediately, but you leave it dans une cave for uh, dans une dizaine d'années, so about ten years. So you let it age its amount de cave. Le fait vivre. That's what we're talking about, on va le garde. de garde. Number three, il fait son vin lui-même. So we're talking about a person who produces wine. That would be up here at the start. We can say a viticulteur or a vigneron. So let's write down both. A viticulteur or a vigneron. I'm not sure if there is a difference between these two words. Sometimes you use them slightly different context, but doesn't give us any indication here. Okay, number four. Il est très mauvaise. Very, very bad. So I think we have la piquette du mauvais vin. I remember when I moved to Vienna, um, we 
moved into a flat share and the first evening that we wanted to celebrate together we wanted to have a glass of wine and it was quite late so the shops were already closed so we went to a petrol station and bought the cheapest wine that we could get there and it was definitely uh, un piquet <laughs> we did not have a full glass either of us I sometimes still see that one wine in the shop, so it must have its pens. <laughs> it's probably going relatively well. Okay, let's continue. Five. Isabelle Merlot, Cabernet ou Chardonnay. That would be the uh, different plants. Or you could say les cépages. Let's put that. Les cépages. And number six. Cela peut être un crémeau ou un uh, ouvré. So that would be sparkling wine. Which we had down here. La mousse au pétillon. Right, I think for me pétillon is a bit easier to remember or mousse Okay So now let's get the red pen and let's look at the correction Where are we? Page 24. Page chapitre 3. Plaisir de la table. Exercice page, page 25. Okay, so for the first one, it just says a millisie, but not. A millisime exceptional. Okay, so here's a slip. Exceptional cette année is already just referring to that vintage, so that year um, of wine. A millisime. The second one is a type of wine that you don't drink immediately, a val de garde. Then we have the producer, le viticulteur, ou le vigneron. You could also say le producteur. Then we have the wine that's not really a pleasure to drink, le piquette. Then uh, les cépages ou les plantes. And the uh, pétillons. and we have to guess whether they are correct or wrong so let's see le merlot est un, est un cépage so we just had this up here it's a bel merlot and we call this cépage so one is correct Let's put a V or red. Number two, la piquette and un vin pétillant. So that's two different things. We had piquette, which is a wine that you can't really drink, and a vin pétillant was 
what we had here in the last sentence, like a cremant, like a champagne, a sparkling wine. So that is four. False. Number three. Il est préférable de faire décanter un bon vin, un bon vin rouge. It's preferable to let a good red wine breathe for a while. Decante. I'm not sure if you also say uh, decant in English. It's the same word in German. <laughs> so that's correct. Right. Number four. Le Cabernet est une vigne. Okay, so we haven't had this before. Um, the vigne, that's the same as vignoble. So that would be the vineyard. But le cabernet is the plant. So that would be wrong. You can have a vineyard full of cabernet, but it's not the same. And five, le vouvray est un vin mousseux. Um, it is a pétillon, yes, mousseux. So that's correct. I'm not completely sure what the vouvray is. Obviously, I know champagne, I know cremant, but blanquette and vouvray are. Um, Two types of sparkling wine I'm not familiar with. And finally, number six, le grand cru est servi en pichet. Oh, I don't think that's a good idea. Pichet is what we have here. And it actually says... Down here it says... Mandy B. So that would be Vand B or Vand Table. For a Grand Cru, you would use um, une carafe. So there it is. Four. It's false. To the third exercise. Complété. Les viticulteurs espèrent que cette année sera un beau. We just had that un beau millésime. With an E at the end. Number two, ce Bordeaux est un vin de... Mm -hmm. On peut le faire pendant dix ans au moins. Ok, so at least ten years probably means you can um, let it age. So it's un vin de garde. Et un vin de garde. On le fait vieillir. So, ce Bordeaux est un vin de garde 
and on peut le faire euh, vir pendant les ombres number three nous avons acheté ce petit vin de chez son producteur de la région so we bought this regional wine, ce petit vin de table number four en septembre, nous avons gagné un peu d'argent en faisant le le vendange they help with the wine harvest and earn a little bit of money faisons les with an S number five ce vin blanc n'est pas sec au contraire il est mouilleux et number six au bistrot de quoi je prends un petit de vin rouge avec mon déjeuner. Um, what do we use here? Un petit piché, maybe. Don't think you would say une petite carafe. So that doesn't work. We have the masculine gender here. Un petit. And carafe would be feminine. So it would have to be une petite carafe. So I think it's a petit piché. Un petit piché. Okay, let's see how we did. All right, we have. Nilesi, Gart et Vir. We have un petit vin de table. B. Faisons les vendanges. Mouilleux et piché. It's going pretty well today. So now we have the last part, number four, trouver une autre manière de dire. So we're looking for a synonym to say the same thing but with a different word. Sandrine va cueillir le raisin chez son oncle qui est viticulteur. So she's helping with the harvest. Yet it appears to be the grapes of raisin. So, Sandrine va vendanger chez son oncle qui est vigneron. Vous devez servir ce vin à température ambiante. So we are serving this wine chambré à la température de la pièce. So chambré. Number three. 
le crémant est un oeil mousseux. That is correct, we can also say pétillant. So number four, je me demande quelle est la quantité d'alcool contenue dans un burnt toast. So, this person is wondering about the uh, alcohol rate in this wine, the quantity of alcohol. We can also say here uh, la teneur ou le taux. So we have two possibilities. La teneur or le taux. D'accord. And finally, number five. Nadia remarque le dépôt au fond de la bouteille. So she notices something at the uh, bottom of the bottle. I'm not sure what the English word is for that in French you can say le dépôt ou la lit. So that's the word we're looking for. La lit. So, here we are, assembly, nous avons danger. Et son oncle qui est vigneron. Then we have chambre. The sparkling wine is pétillon. Ah, here we have la teneur. Oh. So, where was that we can say la teneur en alcool mais le taux d'alcool. So one time we use en and one time we use de. And finally, the last part is la lit. Okay, so just gets to show that you have to read carefully to catch these little words too. But they went pretty well. And I think it's a very interesting topic. So for today, let's close this up. And I hope that you enjoyed this little video and maybe you'll remember some of the vocabulary. Maybe next time you go shopping for a bottle of wine. Or maybe you even visit a vineyard. Alright. So, thank you for watching. And I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.